Let my prayer be set forth in thy sight as the incense, and let the lifting up of my hands be an evening sacrifice. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore, Restore thou those, those who are penitent, penitent, according to thy promises, promises declared unto mankind in Christ, Christ Jesus our Lord. And, and grant, O most, most merciful, merciful Father, Father, for his sake, sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, Father and, and to the Son, Son and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, and, and will be forever. Be forever. Amen. O gracious light, Pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing thy praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thou art worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. I have become a portent to many but you are my refuge and my strength. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Do not cast me off in my old age. Forsake me not when my strength fails. For my enemies are talking against me. And those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together. They say, God has forsaken him. Go after him and seize him, because there is none who will save. God, be not far from me. Come quickly to help me, O oh my God. Let those who set themselves against me be put to shame and be disgraced. Let those who seek to do me evil be covered with scorn and reproach. But I shall always wait in patience and shall praise you more and more. 
glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. reading from the book of Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands, pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant Israel in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward is with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nation, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. Here endeth the lesson. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my my spirit spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. He remembering his mercy hath hope in his servant Israel as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory Glory to to the the Father, and to the Son, and to to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as as it was was in the beginning, beginning, is is now, now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, 
the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, we have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, the light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light so that you may become children of light. After Jesus had said this, he departed and hid from them. Here endeth the lesson. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine, For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. 
and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. O God, who by the passion of thy blessed Son didst make an instrument of shameful death to be unto us the means of life, grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give thine angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for thy love's sake. Amen. Amen. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As Holy Week progresses, we experience a sense of gathering darkness. The light is beginning to fade as we walk these days, as we come to know more shadow than brightness. We move through that dimming light with dread toward the moment when the sky darkens in the afternoon and the light of Jesus' life is extinguished. This evening, though, we have glimpses of light. In Isaiah, the call of God's servant expands. It opens out beyond restoring Israel, beyond sustaining the tribes of Jacob, God now proclaims to God's servant, I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Salvation is no longer something reserved to the obscure corners of the simple life of the people of Israel. It is instead ready to be offered and spread as light that will reach to the end of the earth. The writer of John's Gospel foresees this light and this glory. He writes of Jesus who will draw all people to himself when he is lifted up from the earth on the cross. And so when some Greeks come wanting to see Jesus, John seizes this dramatic moment to make the point. Now the whole world is coming. Now is the time for the glorification of Jesus to happen. All the world is coming to him and now the light of God's glory will be revealed. But perhaps not exactly as we imagine. A grain of wheat must enter the darkness of the earth so that the new growth may find its way back to the warmth and the light of the sun in order to bear much fruit. To follow Jesus means to take the spotlight away from ourselves and to enter into that unobtrusive place of serving, of giving, 
up ourselves, giving of ourselves for others. In Jesus, the glory is revealed as he embraces the overshadowing hour of his death, as he willingly goes to be crucified by the authorities of the religious world and the rulers of the empire in order that the ruler of this world might finally be driven out. The way to glory, the way to light is through darkness. The light of salvation reaching to the end of the earth shows itself in darkness. The glorification of God in Christ is not in a stunning flash of light show, but in submission to the light-destroying power of death. This paradox is not easy for us. This vision of light and glory is not at all obvious to us. It's not what we naturally think of or what we want to imagine when we picture the glory of God. And still we are invited to walk this way, to believe this paradox, to live because it is true for us. And so Jesus offers that invitation to walk in light. Even though we are walking through this week into the gloom that gathers around us as we follow Jesus on that road to salvation, even as the darkness continues to fall, he's with us on the way. He offers us light for the pathway for as long as possible. He urges us to see and believe in that light and to walk by it for as long as we can so that when the profound darkness comes and when all seems shattered, we will be ready, ready to see glory in a crown of thorns and a life poured out on the cross, ready to see glory in absolute and devastating darkness, ready on the way of the cross to become children of light. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, we thine unworthy, unworthy servants, servants do give thee most, most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and hast promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life 
everlasting. Amen. Amen. O Lord, arise, help us. And to deliver us for thy name's sake. O God, we have heard with our ears, and our fathers have declared unto us the noble works that thou didst in their days, and in the old time before them. O Lord, o Lord arise, arise, help us, and, and deliver, deliver us for, for thy name's sake. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O, o Lord, Lord, arise, arise help, help us, and, and deliver us for, for thy name's sake. sake. From our enemies defend us, O Christ. Graciously behold our afflictions. With pity behold the sorrows of our hearts. Mercifully forgive the sins of thy people. Favorably, with mercy, hear our prayers. O Son of David, have mercy upon us. Both now and ever vouchsafe to hear us, O Christ. Graciously hear us, O Christ. Graciously hear us, O Lord Christ. Let us pray. We humbly beseech thee, O Father, mercifully to look upon our infirmities, and for the glory of thy name, turn from us all those evils that we most justly have deserved, and grant that in all our troubles we may put our whole trust and confidence in thy mercy, and evermore serve thee in holiness and pureness of living, to thy honor and glory, through our only mediator and advocate, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.